This is the plaintiff, Kayla Ziegler. She says she bought a car from the unscrupulous defendant, who knowingly unloaded a lemon on her, and she's mad as can be at him. The guy totally took advantage of her. She's out $4,000, and because the defendant hid defects in the car he sold her, she's owed this money and is suing him. This is the defendant, Jose Medina. He says the plaintiff test drove the car with her father, loved it, and bought it from him. Two days later, the girl calls him, harassing him, saying he took advantage of her. Hogwash. He's not a bad guy and thinks her mechanic is the one ripping her off, claiming the car needs work. He's accused of unloading a lemon. All parties, please get your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff bought a car from the defendant and claims he knew it was a lemon. But the defendant says the plaintiff checked the car out so tough. It's the case of ain't no lemonade here. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, uh, Ms. Ziegler? Yes. You are suing Jose Medina for $4,000 that you say he owes you for selling you, knowingly selling you a lemon. Tell me what happened. So, this all happened within a five-day span. Um, I'm a college student. I withdrew from my savings to buy a car. I was looking on Craigslist where I came across his ad, which I have a picture of. In his ad, it says it runs and drives great, which I came to find out that it doesn't. Um, when I met up with him, it was on a Monday, the um, check engine light was on. So he's like, let's bring it to AutoZone down Wait, the street. When you're looking, when you're test driving the car, the check engine light goes on? Yes. Why didn't you just look for another car? Well, because I was told that the check engine light can go on for It could, minor but why things. would you take the risk? Is this your first car that you're buying? Yes. Who's the gentleman with you? My boyfriend. Okay. Um, was he with you? No. Uh, all right. Um, I mean, you know, there's lots of cars for sale. Like, the check engine, the one with the that. check engine light on may not be my first choice. This but isn't the first car I looked at. Um, it was what I was looking for. I knew what I was looking for. So you go with him to AutoZone? Yeah, he suggests, let's go to this AutoZone. Um, and the guy there took the cord, whatever they use, and hook it up to your car. Um, and he goes inside, he looks up the computer and says, it only needs a $45 part. At this point, I don't know if he knew that guy or what, because... I didn't know that that hookup does not check the engine. That is what I was told when I brought it to the dealership. That what, how does the dealership know what hookup AutoZone had? I think it's standard yeah. what hookup that they use. I don't know. So um, they said that was all it needed. Okay, I said that was fine. So I hand him $7,400 cash. He puts it in his pockets, carries on. I drive the car home. And Okay, and then you take it to the Nissan dealer the next day. Nope. So I insure it that night, and I wake up the next morning, and i all excited to go register it. I go to start the car, and then I hear things going on underneath, and I go, great. Like what? Like, er, uh, you know, sounds. It sounds that you weren't hearing when you test drove. Yes. Did you test drive it? Yes, because when I went there, the car was already on. Why when would I, the car be on when you get there? Because he was on, he was sitting in the car with it on, waiting for me. But now and you didn't turn it off and turn it on. Nope. And now I know why it was on because that's when you hear the initial sounds of when everything happens. Well, why didn't you just turn it off and turn it on when you were test driving it? I wish okay. I did. Do you also wish that you'd had a mechanic take a look at it beforehand? You bought um, it. I thought that AutoZone was sufficient because they said, "Oh yeah, you know that's that's what okay. it needs." Okay. So in your mind, you did have a mechanic look at it. Okay. All right, so go in ahead. In a sense. So, well, also, I took his word saying it runs and drives great. I have no problems. However, When you test drove it, did it run and drive great? Yeah, okay. to the point where I bought it, but little did I know it really internally didn't, um, which he ended what up What did you end me, up doing the next day? You register the car. What day do you bring it to the dealer? So I register the car the next day for um, $600. That's when I heard the noise. Um, the next day... Did you register it after hearing the noise? I had to to bring it to Nissan. Okay. I couldn't drive it without registering How'd you it. get it to your house? I drove it. Oh, so I guess you could, right? Okay, I didn't so want to do that yeah, again. I'm, I'm, I'm not a fool. Go ahead. Well, All I right. didn't want to do that again. Well, okay. Um, so the next day is when I brought it to Nissan. Okay. And do you have something from Nissan? Yes, I May have. I see it. So the car needed 
$5,865.75 worth of work, and this is everything, a breakdown of what and why and how you get to why it needs that. And does it occur to you to take it to a mechanic that wasn't a dealer? I did not. Um, not even since then in the preparation for the case? Like not even since then to figure well, out, I ah, maybe let me get a couple of estimates and see that I'm not getting I didn't a little finish bloated. the story, so. No, I, I don't care if you finish the story. I'm, I, I'm, I'm running the train, not you. So I just asked a question, so I need you to listen. Did you take it to any other mechanics besides the Nissan dealer in order to get a real handle on what it should cost and what's wrong and to fix the noise and all that? That's no, what. because I no longer have the car. Okay, and where's the car? I had to trade it in. You had I to? I what could not mean? get in touch with him, and I was not willing to pay almost six thousand dollars worth of damage on a car that I already invested. Who'd you tra 8, You didn't in. trade it in with the same dealership, did you? I did. That same day. Um, I was on the phone with them that Thursday, and then that Friday, I traded in with in with them. And I've never heard from him since. I've tried to get in contact Who, with him. Uh, you traded it in, and what did you do? You put the car as a down payment, I guess? And they gave so, you... So, they traded it in for me. Uh, luckily, they gave me $4,000 for it, so I'm really only out $4,000, um, but now I have a $310 car payment, which the only reason I bought it in cash originally is because I didn't want a car payment. Wow, you're, you're, you're kind of full of bad decisions though, you know? You, get, you, you should have, when you buy a used car, it's as is, and you should have somebody look at it before you take it. And before you trust one person you've never met before who tells you, I'm gonna give you 4,000 for this, because there's a, you, maybe take it to somebody else to make sure that, you know, it's legitimate. When do you find, she says that you ignored her completely, that she's calling, she can't get in touch with you and she's calling you to tell you about the problems. Did you just blow off her calls? It's not that, it's just the line of work that I do, I'm a truck driver, so as I'm working, when she be calling, I just, I, I can't pick up the phone. Now when I do pick up the phone, it's like she was just bad mouthing, just real rude, and then her, her boyfriend also just sending text messages and stuff like that. Sending so, text messages saying what? Well, just like, like to handle this like a man and stuff like that. To what? Because she wanted her money back? Yeah, she's saying. What did you tell her when she said, I want my money back? Well, I told her that the car was sold, first of all, as is, and the car did not need all that that was needed. This is the only thing that, I don't know if you got it out there, but what they said that the car needed, that her dad also has um, proof of it. What do you mean her dad right has proof of it? Well, because her dad was the one that was with her when we tested with the car. Oh, she went with her dad, and yes. then the dad went with her to, and you and the car to AutoZone. Right. Well, we, first of all, we was at Dairy Queen. That's where we had met up. She had test drove the car. It's a very fine place to, to meet up. <laughs> yeah, it was hot. So um, she had the opportunity to test drive the car there. Was the car on when she got there? It was on. The AC was on. Oh, okay. But just hot, you know. So she's right about that. Right. But, but the, um, had you ever heard a noise when you turn on the car? No. No. Never? Not any no. noise? No. Okay. How is it that she coincidentally, the very next day after buying it, hears a noise? There was no noise. Your Honor, you think she's lying about that? Yeah. But Nissan, according to Nissan, let's see what Nissan says. Nissan doesn't talk about a noise. They say you brought it in because you said the check engine light was on. Yeah. That's something you knew about when you bought the car. Nissan doesn't say there's some loud noise. Well, all those problems make a noise. Not, not according to you when you bring it into Nissan. The complaint. Customer states check engine light on. There's not a word about a noise. Were you embellishing your case to try to win and bringing up some noise that didn't happen? You take it to Nissan. Nissan tells you, oh, no, you need all this stuff. And uh, AutoZone doesn't know what they're talking about. And you don't take it to a mechanic that's not Nissan and not AutoZone. Do you have some friend at AutoZone? No. So if the check engine light goes on when she's test driving the car, do you run for the hills? Of course it is. That's just a sign that it's a lemon. What do you say? It's a lemon, you gotta leave. What if they say, what if they, who hasn't talked yet? Who hasn't talked yet? Okay, so what if they say, okay, the check engine light is on, I'll give you a $500 discount. Uh, no. I'll give you a $750 discount. I would make them find out what's wrong with it first. Fair enough, that's a smart woman going inside the courtroom. He told me he had just bought the car three months prior too, so I'm assuming that's why he wanted to sell it. No, had you bought the it's car? not why I said, I wanted to sell it because I wanted to buy me a motorcycle, I told you that. Okay, yeah. don't, talk to, don't talk to each other. Don't talk to each other. Had you, you had bought the car from where? I had bought it for, in New York from an, another dealer okay. from over there. A Nissan dealer? Not a Nissan dealer. Okay. And, uh, and you, um, 
And did you buy it for yourself for personal use? Yeah, for myself. So why were you selling it three months later? I wanted a motorcycle. My brother-in-laws well, and all have motorcycles. Well, why don't you think that through before you buy a car? Well, I just wanted to downgrade, get a motorcycle. Because it had problems. Did you take the car uh, in to any mechanic bef in that three months in order to have it looked at? No. It didn't need anything when, when I had I have his Craigslist ad saying it runs and drives great. Where, oh, let me see that. Let I me have, see. Let me see the advertisement. I because if he lies on an advertisement, driving great is not a lie. That's an opinion, you know. So you have to test and make sure that opinion is your opinion. Runs and drives good. And now I'm paying. Serious money. inquiries. Eighty-five hundred. Serious inquiries only. No law ball. Low ball. Please don't waste my time, or yours. Clean title. No liens. All right. Kyla. Yes. I feel bad for you because you remind me of my daughters. Uh, I can't help you here. This is an as is sale and my hands are tied by the law. I also would like to give you and your boyfriend some advice. It's not that dealers have a bad reputation or that I assume that dealers are bloating things. I don't assume anything. I just know that I would never trust one opinion on what was wrong with a car, especially when that opinion sells me another car, hooks me up with the salesman and sells me another car. I just wouldn't. I would always want to have a second opinion on it. Um, and uh, that's my advice to you. And my second, my first advice to you, that's my second advice to you, my first advice to you is never again to buy a used car without having somebody take a look at it to make sure that it's, a, look all you want and then once you've decided on it, spend the 150 before you buy the car, not after. Because after, no judge is gonna be able to help you unless you can prove that he made a specific representation like I just put new tires on it or it's a brand new engine specific representation that was false, or that he specifically knew $5,000 was needed and um, didn't tell you, none of which you've been able to prove here. Uh, far from it. So my verdict in this case is for the defendant. Well, it didn't work out for the plaintiff in this case, unfortunately, as, uh, as the judge just said, her hands are tied. She couldn't do anything for you. Yes, I wish you could. Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> you think you learned anything from all this? Oh, she gave you some very good advice. Get It'd a been second better opinion. if you'd had this advice a month ago. Yeah, it would. You know? It would be better to get a second opinion next yeah. time we'll, well do that. Well, you have learned a valuable yeah. life lesson. All right. I'm sorry. Thank you very much, uh, though. That's the way it works out. All right. Here comes Mr. Medina. Uh, obviously, you didn't call her back. I mean, the judge couldn't find any evidence of it. Do you feel at all sorry for you? you think? Yeah, I mean, you, no more feelings. Really? I mean, I, I feel like I sold her a, a reasonable car. Really? You know? Yeah. So you didn't think it had $5,000 worth of problems with no, it when you let honest, it go? No, I didn't. All right. Well. It's a dealer. You know they're going to charge your norm and a leg. Well, for I know it, so. they're going to charge more, but I mean they do the analysis there sometimes. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Sorry you. about that. Harvey, interesting case. A lot of good advice though for people buying used cars. So, um, you look, you, you know, you buy a car and they say it's as is, take it or leave it. Fine. You can still try and negotiate a warranty. People think, okay, well, I just have to accept what they say. It's all negotiation. So you can negotiate, say, a 30-day warranty from the person, get it in writing, but there's no law saying that you can't try to get what you want.